My dear Susie Clemens, I have received all the letters which you and your little sister have written me by the hand of your mother and nurses. I have also read those which you little people have written me with your own hands. For although you did not use any characters that are in grown people's alphabet, you use the characters that all children in all lands on earth and in the twinkling stars use. And as all my subjects in the moon are children and use no characters but that, you will easily understand that I can read your and your baby sister's jagged and fantastic marks without trouble at all. But I had trouble with those letters which you dictated through your mother and nurses, for I am a foreigner and cannot read English writing well. You will find that I made no mistakes about the things which you and the baby ordered in your own letters. I went down your chimney at midnight when you were asleep and delivered them all myself, and kissed you both, because you are good children, well-trained, nice-mannered, and about the most obedient little people I ever saw. But in the letter which you dictated, there are some words that I could not make out for certain, and one or two small orders which I could not fill because we ran out of stock. Our last lot of kitchen furniture for dolls has just gone to a poor little child in the North Star away up in the cold country about the Big Dipper. Your mama can show you that star, and you will say, Little Snowflake, for that is the child's name. I'm glad you got that furniture, for you need it more than I. That is, you must write that with your own hand, and Snowflake will write you an answer. If you only spoke it, she wouldn't hear you. Make your letter light and thin, for the distance is great, and the postage heavy. There was a word or two in your mama's letter, which I couldn't be certain of. I took it to be a trunk of full doll clothes. Is that it? I will call at your kitchen door just about nine o'clock this morning to inquire. But I must not see anybody, and I must not speak to anybody but you. When the kitchen doorbell rings, George must be blindfolded and sent to open the door. Then he must go back to the dining room, or the china closet, and take the cook with him. You must tell George that he must walk on tiptoe and not speak. Otherwise, he will die someday. Then you must go up to the nursery and stand on a chair or the nurse's bed and put your ear to the speaking tube that leads down to the kitchen. And when I whistle through it, you must speak in the tube and say, Welcome, Santa Claus. Then I will ask whether it was a trunk you ordered or not. If you say it was, I shall ask you what color you want your trunk to be. Your mama will help you to name a nice color, and then you must tell me every single thing in detail which you may want the trunk to contain. Then when I say goodbye and Merry Christmas to my little Susie Clemens, you must say goodbye, good old Santa Claus. I thank you very much, and please tell Snowflake I will look at her star tonight, and she must look down here. I will be right in the West Bay window, and every fine night I will look at her star and say, I know somebody up there, and like her too. Then you must go down into the library and make George close all of the doors that open into the main hall, and everybody must keep still for a while. I will go to the moon and get those things in a few minutes. I will come down to the chimney that belongs to the fireplace that is in the hall. If it is a trunk you want, because I couldn't get such a thing as a trunk down the nursery chimney, you know. People may talk if they want, until they hear my footsteps in the hall. Then you tell them to keep quiet a little while, till I go back up the chimney. Maybe you will not hear my footsteps at all. So you may go now and then and peep through the dining room doors. And by and by you will see that the thing which you want, right under the piano in the drawing room, for I shall put it there. If I should leave any snow in the hall, you must tell George to sweep it into the fireplace, for I haven't time to do such things. George must not use a broom, but a rag, else he will die some day. You must watch George and not let him run into danger. If my boot should leave a stain on the marble, George must not wholly stone it away. 
Leave it there always in memory of my visit. And whenever you look at it or show it to anybody, you must let it remind you to be a good little girl. Whenever you are naughty and somebody points to that mark which your good old Santa Claus's boot made on the marble, what will you say, little sweetheart? Goodbye for a few minutes till I come down to the world and ring the kitchen doorbell. Your loving Santa Claus, whom people sometimes call the man in the moon. <laughs>